If you can get to the place where you say, I want to please the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost then you're coming to God today. and you're already halfway there. Holy Ghost, you're God in the earth today. Something I hear Holy quite Ghost often from people God online and you know, today. people in general, and frankly, I say it myself, Ghost, is God I want to please today. God. Well, if people want to please God, there is a method and a way that you can go about doing that so you can actually please God. Hebrews chapter 11, and then let's look at verse 6. You probably knew that. You should, you know, some of these things you should already know when I say please God. You should go, oh, well, I know a verse that has how to please God in it. But without faith, without faith, it's impossible to please Him impossible meaning so if I am gonna please God and I want to please God and and my whole desire here is to know how to please God that without faith it's impossible so in some way in some capacity faith is going to have to be a part of me pleasing God because if I don't have faith then it's impossible to please him does this make sense without faith it's impossible to please him so I could do this I could do that I could do a whole bunch of stuff but if it isn't involved in faith or it doesn't have the culmination of faith towards the end of it in it then it's impossible to please him down that road you can say oh I'm gonna go down this road to get to Boston well if you go down the wrong road you may never get to Boston or whatever other city you're talking about Do you understand you got to go on the road that takes you to that place well pleasing God is the road that we're going down for he that comes to God right must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so here we have in Hebrews 11 verse 6 he says it's impossible to please God without faith but he also tells us the elements of that faith that we're going to have to bring together in order to please God you understand it's outlined right here one two three without faith it's impossible to please him for he that comes to God he's going to talk about the things that please him now he that comes to God we got to come to God we must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him are you seeing this so here we have the elements of how we are going to please God I'm gonna please God you're gonna please God we're gonna go through this you might want to use one of your fingers or use one of your bookmarks or something we're going to keep coming back to this because I'm going to use that as my outline for this message of how to please God number one first and foremost let's read it again without faith it's impossible to please him for he that comes to God so we have to first of all know who we're coming to we have to know who God is so the one God that we're talking about is the Holy Ghost but the fact is the Holy Ghost is God he is the one Jesus sent he's equal with the Father and the Son and he's the only one in the earth the Father's in heaven Jesus is at his right hand so the one God that we're talking about is the Holy Ghost who's in the earth so he that comes to God first and foremost you got to know who the God is that you're coming to who are you coming to is the Holy Ghost God he is God he's the one that we're coming to he's the one Jesus sent I could take you to John 14 16 says and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever so who's gonna be abiding with you after Jesus did this thing that he said he was gonna do he's gonna to go to the Father and he's gonna send the another the another what another like Jesus he sent another person into the earth the Holy Ghost to be with us so who's with you the Holy Ghost and you go over to chapter 16 John chapter 16 verse 7 nevertheless I tell you the truth it's profitable for you that I go away if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if I depart I will send him unto you so we have here an indication that the the one requirement of the comforter coming to us is that Jesus wouldn't be here so Jesus has gone he's departed and he sent the another and the another is the Holy Ghost he's the one Jesus sent 
now I do an awful lot of preaching on this an awful lot of teaching on this is to get people to come up to this place to understand that the Holy Ghost is God he's equal with the Father he's equal with the Son he's just as much God he's just as much of a person except for the fact that he is in the earth right now and the Father and the Son aren't so when we go to Hebrews chapter 11 and it says that he that comes to God follow me here he that comes to God what is the God that he's coming to the Holy Ghost now it takes time for your thinking to change because most people haven't been taught that most preaching hasn't preached that and so a lot of the times when you're hearing this message you really got to wrestle with all that other garbage that you've been taught and to get that out of the way so that you can finally come to the place that wait a minute this is the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is with me it's me in the Holy Ghost you understand he's the one I'm coming to so when I wake up in the morning and I'm talking to God there's one God and it's the Holy Ghost and he's the one I'm talking to if you can get to the place where you can say I want to please God that's what we're talking about I want to please God if you can get to the place where you say I want to please the Holy Ghost then you're coming to God and you're already halfway there a lot of preaching and teaching is to bring us to this place where I can say I want to please the Holy Ghost in fact try that on for size I want to please the Holy Ghost see and when you do that you're now you've come to a place where you've begun to fulfill those ticking off those things in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 where you're gonna please God because now you're coming to God first and foremost you have to know who he is and he is the Holy Ghost and when you say I want to please the Holy Ghost you've already gone halfway there you're coming to him I'm coming to the Holy Ghost he that comes to God so I'm coming to the Holy Ghost is this making sense so once that's settled let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11 again verse 6 but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that comes to the Holy Ghost are you here he that comes to the Holy Ghost must believe that he must believe that he is meaning believe that he's is he's alive you know other verses of scripture call him the living God you're believing that he the Holy Ghost is alive try that on for size he the Holy Ghost is alive he's alive he's living where is he alive where is he living where is he a living God he's a living God in the earth remember Jesus sent him he's now in the earth who else is in the earth oh I'm in the earth isn't that great now you're you and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Ghost in you the Holy Ghost in us he's alive read it again he that comes to the Holy Ghost must believe that he the Holy Ghost is I believe the Holy Ghost is alive is what is alive and is in the earth and when you learn that he is God he is the Holy Ghost he is the living God he is alive and he's in the earth with you that's another really long step towards pleasing God by faith are you here so where is he he's in the earth he is alive where are you you're in the earth you are alive oh it looks like you got something going on here now you two we need to get you two together without faith it's impossible to please him he that comes to God the Holy Ghost must believe that he the Holy Ghost is are you getting this there's so much weight in that verse of Scripture you believe that he is God the Holy Ghost is God the Holy Ghost is he is he is he is he is in this earth and he is everywhere I go he's in this earth in fact he's in me we'll get into that in just a minute first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you which you have of God you're not your own for you're bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God what's the God that's in your body 
the Holy Ghost you're supposed to glorify the God that is in your body now your number one function as a temple of God do you understand this you are a temple of God you're the temple of what God you're the temple of the Holy Ghost your number one function as a temple of God is the worship of God the worship of what God the worship of the God to which you are a temple you're the temple your your main function is to worship the God that you are a temple of what God would that be that you are a temple of the Holy Ghost so there's nothing wrong in fact there's a lot right with you saying I worship you Holy Ghost that should be the number one principal function of you as a person that is a temple of God is to use those words try them out I worship you Holy Ghost see I know that he's the God that's in me and I my function as a temple is to worship him what are you getting this worship is fundamental to coming to God remember he that comes to God he that approaches God he that you know when you come into the presence of God that means comes to worship is fundamental in coming to God God who God the Holy Ghost so worshiping him using the words I worship you Holy Ghost and that's predominantly what I mean right now I don't mean the music portion of a service I don't mean a whole bunch of other things that people call worship I mean you as a temple saying I worship you and then saying it again I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost that's your number one function as a temple it's also fundamental in coming to God approaching God you approach you approach God with worship regular daily worship of the Holy Ghost I know that sounds foreign to so many people's ears regular daily worship of the Holy Ghost using the words I worship you Holy Ghost will straighten out so many of the things that I'm having to deal with tonight and many other nights regular daily worship of the Holy Ghost say that regular daily worship of the Holy Ghost what do you mean I mean every day you get up you're a temple who do I who what is my function as a temple but to worship the what the God that's on the inside that it, that is in the temple I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost and when you do that it will begin to straighten out all of those religious things that have been holding you in bondage religious things that, that keep you back from walking with God in the earth and keep you back from pleasing him which is what we're talking about and it holds back your faith doing it will build your faith regular daily worship of the Holy Ghost will straighten out many wrong religious conceptions I dare you to do it I dare you to daily I dare you to daily open your mouth and say I worship you Holy Ghost you are God in the earth today when you do that you'll begin to be straightened out and you're also coming to him in the right way which pleases him that's going to change the way you think about your situation the reality is it's you and him in the earth and you get up in the morning it's you and the Holy Ghost you as the temple of the Holy Ghost and with him however effectively you walk with him in the earth that's it you and the Holy Ghost he's the one with whom we have to do and your regular daily worship of him will straighten all that out and it'll get you going in the right direction let's read verse 6 again but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that comes to God that should say a little something else to you now right he that comes to God how am I gonna come to God I'm gonna come to him by worshiping him I'm approaching him with worship I worship you Holy Ghost why did I say Holy Ghost because he's God he's God in the earth today he that comes to God must believe that he is we've already dealt with that a little bit we believe he is what he is alive and he is in the earth in fact he's really close to you in the earth he's in you so we're getting along here we've already started down the path of pleasing God we're coming to him we believe he is we believe he is what alive and in the earth for he that comes to God must believe that he is and say and 
and that that he is a something so we believe that he is alive we believe that he is in the earth and we believe he is we don't just leave it off there he is something according to this he is a rewarder he's a rewarder in the earth he's a role he's a present I like to say it this way a present-day rewarder because so many people are off you know they put everything off to heaven you know and when I die I'll get healed when I which makes no sense when I die I'll I'll get my inheritance all of these things they're waiting for heaven but the Holy Ghost when you get to know him is a present day rewarder try that present day rewarder who he the one that we come to he the one that is and he is a rewarder present day in the earth who so the Holy Ghost we need to learn of him as a present-day rewarder and he does rewarding things he rewards he gives you reward he gives you gifts he gives you promises he is the promise it's one of his names it's one of the Holy Ghost's name is that he is the promise he is a rewarder we need to believe that he is a rewarder go to first Timothy first Timothy chapter 6 and then let's look at verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy so we're supposed to trust in trust is another word for faith we're gonna trust in the living God who would this be the Holy Ghost he said you're the temple of the living God and here you're supposed to trust in the living God or believe in the living God trust is another word for faith trust is another word for belief we're gonna trust we're gonna believe we're gonna have faith in living God Holy Ghost are you getting this who Holy Ghost I find this curious he goes living God who living God who and then he tells you who gives us richly all things to enjoy see why are we believing in a living God who is who is in the earth and we're supposed to believe that he rewards us because that's who he is it's who he is living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy it's his name living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy living God why living God because he's alive who gives us richly all things to enjoy we're learning to know him as one who rewards us wouldn't you call that a reward I would call that a reward and not only that gives us richly all things but all the gifts of the Spirit where do the gifts of the Spirit come from and this is not really a trick question I actually give the answer in the question where do all the gifts of the Spirit come from they come from the Spirit and so you've got healing you've got working of miracles you got discerning of spirits right tongues interpretation of tongues all of these things worketh that one and the self same Spirit it's good to know him and like I said before all the promises of God are yes and amen we're beginning to learn of him as a present day rewarder and in, invariably when people begin to worship the Holy Ghost and they receive the Holy Ghost as God they begin to see the manifestation of him in the earth and believe for it because now they're not believing that he's just off in heaven somewhere they believe he's actively actively involved in their life Psalms 103 forget not all his what benefits he has benefits another word for benefits would be rewards we're serving him we're believing him as a God that is in the earth and rewards so the Holy Ghost is a rewarder go back Hebrews chapter 11 we're talking about how to please God I want to please God and we've been walking down this road look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that comes to God must believe that he is who did we come to the Holy Ghost 
one of the best ways to come to him is through worship he that comes to God must believe that he the Holy Ghost is is where is alive and is in the earth are you here this is faith that pleases God and not only is he alive and in the earth he is an active rewarder of us and what's he actively rewarding you with all of the promises of God yes and amen all of the gifts of the Spirit he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that uh oh of them that diligently diligently seek him now would it matter now at the end of this verse who we're seeking yes you must be seeking the Holy Ghost he is God he's in the earth he's alive he's an active rewarder of you in the earth if you diligently seek him and that according to your Bible is what faith is are you here now quickly just go back up to verse 5 it's right before verse 6 talking about faith how to please God by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God did Enoch please God yes what was it that pleased God about Enoch according to the Bible said he had a testimony meaning a testimony is simply the things you say the things that Enoch said pleased God and pleased him so much that not only did he bless him on earth he had to he just took him Enoch's name literally means disciplined so Enoch was disciplined and what was he disciplined in I won't have you turn there but Genesis 5 24 said Enoch walked with God so Enoch was disciplined that's what his name was he was disciplined in walking with God well what does it mean to walk with God Amos 3 3 what is what does Amos 3 3 say how can two walk together except they be agreed meaning how can two people walk together or move together unless they're in agreement the word agreement means saying the same thing so Enoch had to learn and be disciplined to say the same thing as God and that's how he walked with God and eventually it pleased God so much that God translated him this is another thing I preach on all the time all the time anyone who comes here knows you walk with God by saying words the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by speaking in agreement with his words now those agreement those agreeable words are all the things that he's already said so confessing the promises but it also could be speaking in other tongues a lot which I preach on also you need to speak in tongues a lot when I'm speaking in tongues I'm speaking the words and syllables that the Holy Ghost is giving me to say and therefore I'm speaking in agreement with God so Enoch was disciplined in this to the point where he had a testimony that pleased God pleased God we're talking about how do I please God Enoch obviously pleased God he has a verse square in front of Hebrews 11 verse 6 where we all go to when we want to know how to please God without faith it's impossible to please God but right before that Enoch has his own little verse in the Bible where he pleased God by speaking in agreement with God Psalm 35 27 let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause yea let them say continually now let's stop right there for a second if I'm saying something what he's gonna talk about in a minute if I'm saying something continually does that require discipline yeah it requires a disciplined person to say something continually or say something so that they don't veer from it a lot of times that's the way it is you can't be saying a verse of scripture that says by Jesus stripes I'm healed and then go off and say well I'm not healed or I'm sick one that one cancels out the other you have to be diligent in it and you have to say continually but saying continually is a discipline it is 
something that requires uh, you to be diligent talking about diligently seeking God let them say continually let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant how is this person being a servant he is being a servant by saying diligently consistently what God wants said and verse 28 and my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise once on Sunday morning no all day long again the servant of the Lord is diligent is disciplined in saying and speaking in agreement with God's Word and they don't veer from it we walk with God and please God by speaking in agreement with his word and doing it diligently daily we're talking about those things that please God this is part of the thing that pleases God now you have to have faith in the process really the things I've been talking about Hebrews chapter 11 we'll look at it again I'm talking about a process of faith without faith it's impossible to please him he that comes to God see it's a process I'm coming to God I'm believing he is I'm believing he's a rewarder of me when I diligently seek him diligently seeking is a process and you have to have faith in the process we're talking about how can I please God you'll have faith in the process it's not just a one-time thing oh I please God no it was a process just like Enoch's faith was a process that pleased God using the words I worship you Holy Ghost speaking diligently daily in agreement with his word either by confession of scriptures or speaking in other tongues a lot these things this is the process of faith and you have to have faith in the process I believe in the process of faith if I speak the scriptures faith comes if I speak in other tongues I'm built up on my most holy faith are you here you have to believe in the process Galatians 6 verse 8 says sow to the Spirit and of the Spirit reap when I'm sowing worship to the Holy Ghost when I'm sowing uh, verses of Scripture to the Holy Ghost I'm gonna of the Spirit reap I have faith in the process be not deceived God is not mocked whatsoever man sows that shall he also reap if I sow to the Spirit I'm gonna of the Spirit reap one of the things that you will reap if you're listening is you will reap his pleasure of you for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him faith is a process of coming to God of believing that he is is where he is in the earth and believing that he is a rewarder of you a rewarder of me when I diligently seek him it's a process you have to have faith in the process I hope you can get this how do I please God you have faith in the process and you do the process and you're diligent about the process and that is what a diligent disciplined seeker of God does when you are engaged in the process listen you're pleasing God when I'm involved in the process I'm pleasing God are you getting this this should be a relief uh, on some people it's not it's not all oh, my faith has culminated I finally please God no it's faith in the process the whole thing is a process if I'm involved or engaged in the process of faith I am pleasing God God who God the Holy Ghost Hebrews chapter 6 verse 11 and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end what's that sound like diligence in a process we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence of the full assurance of hope till the end verse 12 that you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise it's a process you get your faith you're on the process of faith and you're you're patiently enduring in your faith now go down to verse 15 and so after he had 
patiently endured he obtained the promise are you getting this faith is a process and when you're engaged in the process you are pleasing God I hope that blesses somebody because it blesses me when I'm engaged in the process of faith coming to God believing he is Jesus said this is the work of God that you believe it's work sometimes coming to God believing he is and believing he's rewarding me as I diligently seek him that's the process of faith and that's what the Bible says pleases him you believe in the process say I believe in the process faith pleases God faith is a process and he's pleased with the process of faith and diligence when you're doing it so he's pleased when I speak in tongues he's pleased when I worship him he's pleased when I learn about him being God in the earth today he's pleased when you listen to this message he's pleased when you worship the Holy Ghost and you confess his word he's pleased he's pleased he's pleased with you when you do those things let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you that these people are reaching out to you to know you as God in the earth today I ask you to reveal yourself to them on the inside of them and through the scriptures let them know that you're with them as the comforter and the counselor and the helper strengthening them and delivering them you are God in the earth today we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name Amen Holy Ghost, oh God.